Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 220. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. And also check out the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Without any further ado, let's get shit started with episode number 220. Boiling for bubbling social media stink soup. Avoid the poison chalice. You ever read something online and then just immediately scream your head off? <laughs> That's what happens when you log on to Twatter, Fuckbook, Cuntgram, Snipdickcheck. I mean, you name all the other fucking pile on social media shit and you're going to see the same goddamn thing. All these fucking losers politicizing shit that shouldn't be politicized. And what things am I talking about here? Well, things like sports, video games, films, TV, all the shit that you use to escape reality from. These cunts on social media want to politicize it, want to use it as a form of pretty much billboard for their fucking special interest group. And it's really disgusting. I mean, really, man, sports is becoming just infested with unnecessary social commentary. And to be quite honest, it's, it's nauseating to watch. And sometimes damn near unrecognizable. I mean, I'm going to be honest, boys and girls. I'm a huge basketball fan. I've been a fan of the Lakers since 1998. And I, I will still be a fan of the Lakers. But... The woke shit show that was the NBA openers on Thursday night was laughable, cringy, and pretty pathetic. And the level of pandering is off the fucking charts. Over 9,000. You got players kneeling down during the national anthem. Black Lives Matter being put all over the court. Players with their social statement jerseys. Members of TNT broadcasting crew constantly reminding audience of the social climate and social injustice in America. When, in all honesty, guys, when I watch sports, when you watch sports, what do you want? Do you want a fucking big old political billboard ad? Or do you just want to watch the sport? I can tell you my answer. I just want to watch the goddamn sport. But these assholes in the NBA have to just come up with this fucking phony baloney virtue signaling, which is ironic because of their whole involvement with China and their rather coerced silence about Hong Kong's uh, unjust treatment by China. It's hilarious. And it's these stupid fucking fanboys of these fucking organizations that can't see this shit because whatever the fucking NBA does is gold. But no, that shouldn't be your fucking thought process. Never trust anything. You can like something. Like, per, per, I'll, I'll give you an example. Personally, I love, ba- I love basketball. I love it. But the organization that runs it, the National Basketball Association, is a pile on steaming fucking crap of shit. A, a crap of shit double on Taja or fucking uh, redundant wording there. But that's just the amount of shit the NBA's got. And it's pretty hilarious. Kneeling during the national anthem. Really, dude? Really? Oh, you got a problem with kneeling. You don't know, you know, you know, understand the problem. No. You clearly, and when I say you, I'm talking about you left-wing extremist fuckheads. What you motherfuckers don't understand is that there is ample amount of data and numbers to suggest that what your premise is based on, that people, specifically black people, are getting killed by cops, it's the wrong assessment. It's a completely incorrect assessment. And you are basing that off of emotions. And because of that, you got players with their fucking dick tucked in their fucking legs, kneeling down and doing dumb shit Because they are feeling a certain way instead of thinking a certain way. 
Am I insensitive for that? I don't think so. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> but I don't really give a shit about your feelings here. Because the way these sports leagues are going about is causing more division than unity. Sports is meant to unify, not divide. And I wish a dumbass like Evander Kane understood that shit. Evander Kane is a hockey player for the San Jose Sharks. And his gripe about the NHL not catering to minorities and general unresponsiveness to Black Lives Matter and how, how mad he is about it, it's laughable. I, good Lord, Evander, guess what? Guess what? Nobody in hockey wants to talk politics. Nobody really does. A lot of people just want to keep their fucking heads down. Even when they got that pride month shit, it's like, dude, you know motherfuckers don't want to do that. They just want to keep their fucking head down and not want to fucking talk politics. Because hockey is a sport, guys, as is basketball. It's a form of escapism. Yet you try to fucking pile this politics shit on and it is fucking nauseating. And in a case like Evander Kane, your ass is probably all up in that fucking social sh justice shit because you live in San Jose, the partial sphincter of extremist left-wing politics in the asshole state known as California. And your ass doesn't have anything better to do because your fucking team stunk all goddamn season long. And that's not to do with race. That's just to do with the actual sport. Because you're an athlete getting paid millions and millions of dollars to play a fucking sport, not virtue signal, asshole. Jesus fucking Christ. But no, 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 no. If, if I say this shit, if I say this shit, I'm the racist, right? If I call out a black person constantly race baiting, constantly telling people that, oh, everyone that is black is oppressed, white people are the oppressors, this entire government is fraud. I'm not going to buy into that shit. I'm going to look at you and think you're a goddamn racist and you are trying to tear this country apart. And your stupidity knows no bound. That's not a racist thing. That's just the fucking judgmental thing on the mental side of a human being. If you're stupid, you're stupid. You should be called that. Regardless of race. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. When did everyone become such soft fucking pussies? When did everyone just decide, oh, we're going to get overly emotional for nothing and get uppity about damn near non-issues? I mean, it's so sad now because mediums, like I said, that I like, like sports, video games, films, TV, I mean, that includes anime. You, you can't do anything in those things now. I mean... Everything is so fucking offensive now that the creative, you know, the creative forces that, that drive making new video games, new anime series, new fucking uh, film, new television series, all those motherfuckers are being suppressed by these cunts. And yeah, man, I, we, we live in this era now where social media retards dictate what they feel they want canceled and censored. And... Yeah, this whole trend, you know, be became this kind of preparation for the hilarity that was the Ghost of Tsushima controversy. And <laughs> I find this story fucking hilarious. And if anybody has the time to research this shit, Google Ghost of Tsushima. And if you want, just go on Twitter on any threads regarding Ghost of Tsushima. And holy crap, it's it's so pathetic because all these wimpy Asian Americans and other woke assholes during and after this game's release has been all up in their fucking arms about how fucking insensitive Ghost of Tsushima is in their minds, in their whacked out minds. Ghost of Tsushima glorifies Japanese nationalism and offends them because, I, I mean, everything and anything offends these assholes, really. But it's this whole notion that 
video games are a form of hyper male violence and it only perpetuates just this whole quote unquote uh, patriarchy in society, which is total horseshit. It's a fucking video game, dude. I mean, holy fucking hell. Even actual Japanese people in Japan like the video game. Some journalists in Japan even praise the video game for its great aesthetics and visual authenticity that pays respects and homage to the Japanese culture. But no, these woke motherfuckers, and I am not lying when I say this shit, these woke motherfuckers were attacking actual Japanese people, telling them they don't understand what it is to be like a Japanese, and they have no say in how an American game is created about the Japanese people. Huh? Huh? How the fuck does that work? You fucking brain dead losers got nothing fucking better to do. You're shitting on a video game that you probably can't pass the first level. And because you get all up in your fucking feelings, you got to go on Twitter and just crap out your fucking insecurities and your bullshit. Unbelievable. Ghost of Tsushima, by all accounts, is a stunning video game and packed with content and something I'm definitely interested in getting my hands on. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. When people kept complaining about it and the woke bitches got more upset, it makes me want to buy that game even more and just flaunt that shit at these perpetually irritable assholes. And good grief, dude. You can't just let a fucking video game be. You just got to fucking get your goddamn perverse thought process in there. Or like, why? Why? Like, the way these woke assholes try to dissect and destroy anime is unbelievable. It's pretty pathetic, to be honest. The, you, you, you understand that these sick psychopaths in the extreme left wing will do anything in their power to villainize something that they don't like, that they clearly don't understand the true intention of what a medium like anime does. It's for entertainment, dude. Chill the fuck out. An anime series like My Hero Academia getting dissected by these fucking woke assholes, it's embarrassing and pathetic. I mean, it, it also comes with this whole notion of the toxic fan bases in any sort of you know visual medium you just see how whacked out these people are you, you just have to realize that oh my god there is no fucking way you could talk rationally to a person who with an anime with Japanese animation that is you know, garnered and, and, and catered towards younger children. I would say children from 9 to 15 in, in shonen animes like My Hero Academia. These motherfuckers go ahead and talk about how, oh, this guy is acting like a pedophile. Oh, this lack of representation in this anime is exactly why it needs to be canceled. And you read shit like this and you think, you, you motherfuckers got nothing better to do? You're spouting diversity, but you can't even fucking think for yourself and create your own shit. I mean, this is the goddamn problem with these woke motherfuckers. They can't appreciate shit for what it is. They just can't. Just gotta warp and mutilate that shit like a penis. <laughs> and yeah, I fucking hear the angry muffled screams already, but prove me wrong. Hmm? My question is, what's with all this perpetual wokeness when a lot of it is unsubstantiated subjective tripe, you keep attacking everyone that questions your motive and logic? I mean, really, you throw these words around like fascist, racist, communist at other people, especially on the center and right wing right now, yet I feel like you have no idea what those words mean. It's like most of you motherfuckers just parrot all the nonsense off of each other and do not cross-reference nor fact-check 
nor read, nor just think for one fucking second. You just mouth off the next trash. Retweet, like, repost, derp. Holy fuck. If I get 20k likes, I'm, I'm right. No, you're not. No, the fuck you're not. What the fuck? What the fuck taught you that? Where in the fuck do you think in the real world that that's actually applicable? What kind of psychopath are you? And that shit leads me to ask a very pertinent question. Where does this perpetual wokeness come from? And I got an answer. I got a hypothesis. Goddamn social media and their false virtue signaling from, from a small group of miserable worms that live to just make people's day-to-day -day lives unbearable because most of them get no real joys in their fucking lives. I think that's the, that's the answer right there. I think social media is really the genesis of all this you know, unwarranted ego, perpetual self-victimization in, in, in hopes of baiting for, for comments and, and false sympathy. It's just a fake reality that people have invested themselves into and, and have completely lost their minds in. And it's, it really is these people who got nothing better to do, just starting all sorts of bullshit. I mean, and more aptly put, they're, they're canceling all sorts of shit for pure narcissistic and sadistic joy. And here's the thing, I'll never understand why you cancel something just because you don't like it. Like, yo, just don't watch it. Just, just don't watch it. I mean, listen, unless it, it's some show that, that shows like literal rape, murder, messing with kids or other disgusting crime, like real life shit, like if, if it's like a camcorder shit, yeah, cancel that nasty shit. You get on that. If it's, like, if it's an actual crime being recorded and aired, yeah, that's a fucking problem, All right. Although, I don't think any te television series is really going to have to fucking, you know, the guts to do that. Although, I mean, we, we do know, like, you know, the, the dark parts of the internet, there, there's some real fucked up shit. But yeah, that, that, that shit. Shit like that should be canceled. Actual crime. That shit should be canceled. But if you don't fucking like it, just, just ignore it. Just fucking ignore it. I mean, you have to go out of your way to generate so much artificial hatred to destroy someone else's creation? Like, really? Really? I mean, the perfect example right here is J.K. Rowling. If you go to J.K. Rowling's social media accounts right now, all these so-called Harry Potter fans are now calling for Rowling's head for being a homophobe or whatever bullshit narrative they want to throw out there because J.K. Rowling has opinions regarding male and female. And that's her own, own opinion. But these psychopaths are just chanting out, everything must be destroyed! Because it disagreed with me. It's a pathetic reflex and reflection, a reaction. I apologize. It's a very pathetic reflex and reaction of a three-year-old. And you see grown-ass people doing this. They're not even, you know, truly grown mentally, but, you know, physically they're like 26, 35. And they come out with reactions like this and you just wonder what the fuck is wrong with people. What the fuck is wrong with people? I mean, my basic premise has always been people, people are assholes. But now you got social media to top that off. You have now found a way to connect the world, yet disconnect people at their core to common sense and common discourse. Everything is a screaming match now. An attack on someone's being. Oh, your opinions don't matter because you're white. I've read that so many fucking times perusing through social media threads on Twitter, like social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, you know, Instagram. When you read shit like that, you, you really start getting worried about the general mentality of people. <sighs> it's 
it, it just, it genuinely makes me sick when you have people who say, I'm not racist, but they pull out the fuck white people card and you're thinking, isn't, isn't that racist? Oh no, you can't be racist against white people because they started racism. Huh? That is some really dumb shit to say. Some real ignorant shit to say and you sound really fucking illiterate. Which is a huge problem in the United States. But social media only exacerbates that problem to an extreme. And, you know, there, is, there isn't a vaccine for social media. Right? There isn't a fucking be-all, end-all solution. But there is a way to remedy the craziness and the insanity. <sighs> Limit logging onto social media. Seriously, don't post shit, don't read shit, don't interact with shit. Just live your real life and do shit. Don't you got a job? Don't you got shit to do? Like for me, taking the route of ignoring shit on social media isn't a path of ignorance, but more of a tool in the mind that acts as a compressor to subdue all the unnecessary garbage you know, trying to filter into my head and into my life. The basic question is, what do we do with garbage kids? <laughs> we, we toss that motherfucker out. We don't leave that at the goddamn house. Funny enough, it is trash day. So <laughs> there's that whole fucking spiel. But here's the thing. If, if you stay on social media on the hour, each and every fucking hour, you will lose your goddamn mind. And lose touch with reality. And that's what happens. And you start losing your grip with what's actually important and what is, you know, on your priority list. And it's shameful because that's just kind of the toxicity that uh, social media reels you into. So the whole thing is no what the real shit in your life is. Deal with that and live your life without rape, murder, and crime, motherfucker. Like, just, just don't do that. Don't, don't be a primitive fucking animal. I mean, humans have evolved. Don't succumb into the degradation that these cunts are going through on social media. Don't do that. You're better than that. You specifically. If you, if you made it this far, con congratulations. But <laughs> you specifically, you're evolved. Don't settle for the animal instincts of the stupid fucking idiots on the woke side. Because ultimately, kids, turn off social media. It'll do wonders for your health. It really does wonders for your health. Maybe not physical health because your boy is rocking the fucking double chin today. But mental health will definitely help. And on the next episode of the Sky Lounge, FA Cup final, bitches. Yes. Yes. My Arsenal football club. My English soccer team is going to be in a domestic cup final against a rival team that I truly, truly hate. And regardless of the result, tomorrow we are going to talk in full for at least half an hour about what happened in the game, my thoughts and feelings about what could potentially happen with Arsenal moving forward, all this shit. And to provide a little bit of context for a lot of you motherfuckers who probably can't stand stalker, but too fucking bad. We're going to talk about the FA Cup final tomorrow. Come on, you gunners. All right. All right, motherfuckers. I appreciate you dropping by this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. And also check out the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, kids. Fuck off. <laughs>